This is the Huion Canvas Pro 13. The laminated display is a big step forward. Unfortunately, there are some other things here that are holding it back. The Huion Canvas Pro 13 is a pen display. This means it's an external monitor that plugs into either your Mac or Windows computer, and you can draw on it with the included pen. Before I get started, the most common question I get on these reviews is should I get this one or should I get that one? And I've made it easy for you. Over on my website, there is a list of my favorites in order of my favorite. I list the reasons I like them and some of the pros and cons, and also links to the full reviews. Full disclosure, there are affiliate links on that site. They link out to Amazon. I get a little kickback every time you click on one of those links and buy anything from Amazon, but that is how I fund this channel. It helps me buy products like this Huion on Canvas Pro 13. So onto the review, as you probably have guessed by the name, it is a 13 inch display, a 13.3 inch display to be exact. What makes this display special is that it is laminated. Wacom has been doing this for a little over a year, but this is the first third party pen display to make this jump. The laminated screen greatly reduces the amount of space between where your stylus hits the glass and where the cursor appears underneath the screen. Older displays had a pretty large gap which reduced accuracy with your pen. Now out of the box on the Mac, I didn't have to do any calibration. On Windows, I did a little bit of calibration. I got it pretty accurate and I really knocked down that parallax effect. I got it to be very accurate. So the question here is, does this new display live up to the hype? I would say yes, for those of us who watch this kind of tech for years we knew it was just a matter of time before this sort of display became more affordable and made it into these third-party Cintiq alternative devices and I gotta say it really made drawing on this a lot better in some ways you probably noticed some of the photos that the screen has an anti-glare coating it's letting off a little bit of a reflection because I have a lot of light on it but when I have it just sitting on my desk it looks really good the colors are crisp the lines look good it's got a full HD screen 1920 by 1080 and on a 13 inch display that actually doesn't look too bad the next barrier I expect a lot of these displays to be breaking is breaking into a more pixel dense display some of the larger Wacoms do that but the Wacom Cintiq Pro 13 is still 1920 by 1080 a very similar screen to this. Now that anti-glare coating that I mentioned makes it nice to draw on. It provides a little bit of resistance. The pen doesn't slide around on glass. It, it feels good. It gives me some control. I like it. So if the screen is a big step forward, I mentioned in the intro, what's the step back? Well, it's the pen itself. It doesn't respond nearly as well as I wanted it to. And it doesn't respond as well as the Huion Canvas 22 Pro that I reviewed two weeks back. The big thing that is coming through is there is a lot of wave to the lines something that Huion's done a pretty good job of in the past of improving as they introduce new models. The other thing that stood out to me is that when I first started using the pen, the initial activation rate was really, really tight. I really had to press to get any kind of line. But the one thing I noticed as I went through my drawing exercises and started to warm up after a few minutes, it got a lot better. I've never actually seen that in a pen before, but if you're picking this up for the first time, you know, that's something you should be aware of. Once I had broken in the pen and had used it for like 10 or 15 minutes, I found the initial activation rate to be pretty good, which is something that Huion's done a really good job of improving over the last year or two. Now, like the 22 Pro, this is a battery-free pen. In fact, it's identical to the one used on the 22 Pro. It's got 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, and for the first time, Huion has added tilt control. Now, I gotta confess, I don't use tilt much when I'm drawing. This is kind of new to me. I know Wacom has had it for a long time. I've just never used it in my brushes. I feel like a blind gerbil just tilting the pen back and forth to test this thing. I don't really know what to look for, but I can say it works. So onto those pen tests, I really need to address these wavy lines. This is something that really came through when I was freehand drawing. In fact, the entire time I was drawing anything, I could I could feel it. Even when I was drawing with the ruler, it was definitely noticeable. And it wasn't just noticeable on slow lines. That happens on a lot of the tablets I test. But as I sped up to that medium speed, that wave was still there and it was still really pronounced. And that's the part that worries me. Oftentimes, I'll speed up my strokes to knock that out or put a stroke straightener on it to improve on that but it was really hard to do that on this display. I tested it on a Mac and on a PC and I found that it performed pretty much the same way on, on both of those. So this isn't a case of it being really wonky on a Mac but working really well on Windows. That happens sometimes that's not the case here. It felt the same on both. Other than that I thought the pen did okay. I mean it holds pressure really well. I wasn't getting any kind of weird extra lines on my fast strokes or anything. 
So I think the pen has a lot of potential. And I'm hoping this is something that's just a driver issue that can be changed and updated in the near future. Let's jump into the hardware side of this. Overall, it looks and feels great. It's one of the most premium feeling pen displays Huion has ever made. The sidebar looks like it has six shortcut keys. It actually only has four. This is the power button, and this one adjusts the screen settings. Those four hot keys that we have, though, those are totally customizable. Set them to any shortcut key that you want. Now the touch strip in the center sometimes pans you around your drawing, sometimes zooms you in and out. At this time, I really haven't been able to figure that piece out. What I'd really like to do with that touch strip is map it to my brushes. So if I scroll up, it increases the size, scroll down, it decreases the size. Unfortunately, as far as I can tell from the instructions and the things that I've read, that is not customizable. It is set the way it is set. So I didn't find much use for it. The buttons themselves feel really good. They're rubbery, they're comfortable. I do question the design decision that put the power button where they did. When I draw, I don't look at the buttons. I go by touch. So I'm looking at my drawing and by touching the buttons I feel which one I want to switch from my brush to my eraser or to undo. That's why I really like tactile buttons like really nice tactile buttons that you could actually feel and on more than one occasion with this display I accidentally turned off the display when I meant to do something else because the power button is right there and it feels just like the other buttons even though it's a little bigger. I never accidentally hit the bottom button. I thought I deserved some kind of reward for that so I went and got a cookie. Then I came back and accidentally hit the button. Cookie's good though. The screen does have a hot spot. It's a good one. It's really, really warm along the top and it's pretty warm along the right hand side. The good news here is my hand doesn't rest along the top, so I didn't really notice it too much when I was drawing. This is worth noting though if you are left handed because if you flip the display around to put the shortcut buttons on the right hand side, that hot spot is going to be sitting right where your hand is. In the box, along with the display, comes a stand. It's not too bad, it's nothing great. You can set it at a couple different angles. The stand itself isn't gonna budge. The display doesn't always stay on the stand for me. The display has a smooth, rounded bottom, and even though that looks nice, it doesn't rest really nicely on the lip of the stand. Any pressure along the top half of the tablet will cause it to tilt a tiny bit and slide right off the stand. I found the same problem if I went to rotate the tablet or, or move it around on my desk at all. It was always falling off the stand. In the box, along with that stand, you're also gonna find all the cables you need to attach to your PC, one of those awesome drawing gloves that I love to dance with, and also a pen donut that holds all your extra nibs. The other good news here is this is the best experience I've had using Huion drivers in a long time. They worked perfectly for me. No goofy mouse behavior or random stopping and requiring a restart. I was really looking forward to this display, mostly because it was a laminated display. They were adding tilt. It, it's a really big step forward, and I love watching the drawing technology really ca catch up with Wacom and, and do great things. But in the end, I just didn't enjoy drawing on it. I look at it this way. If I got a refrigerator, it's got a ton of shelf space, it's got one of those ice makers and a water dispenser. Maybe it can suck out all this old smelly air and replace it with the good smell and fresh air. Maybe it even has Wi-Fi, connects to the internet, orders me more Capri Sun when I run out. It would be an amazing fridge. But if that fridge can't keep my food cold, I'm probably gonna get frustrated. The number one thing that I'm looking for in a drawing tablet is clean, crisp lines, and unfortunately, the main thing that I'm looking for here, the Canvas Pro 13, can't really do that well for me. I am hopeful that maybe down the road, sooner, hopefully, rather than later, that this is something that can be solved with drivers. I'm not really sure. I would love to see this cleaned up. One thing that Huion has always done a really good job of is iterating on their devices. I've mentioned the 22 Pro I reviewed a couple weeks ago several times here, and what I really liked about it is it was the same shell, it looked identical, but they had made some small incremental changes that just made it a better display. I would love to see Huion do that with the 13 as well. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you making it here to the end. Like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and and that's all I've got for this week. I will see you in a couple of days.